All right, where we left off with assignment four, we had just cut our creature out of the cloud like a cookie cutter, right? And remember that we create these YouTube lists so that you can refer back to them for, for different things you need. This is not meant to be a long assignment, but depending on the silhouette of your creature, right, how well the shape of your creature just on its own describes the creature, makes it for a more difficult or more, uh, uh, easy isn't the right word, a more traditional cloud shape. And so I can look at this now and I've started to use certain tools. We've used Smudge, which is a new tool, this one right here, as, as well as old tools like the um, Soft Edged Eraser, right? To vary the edge of this cloud. And clouds are all about edge control. Some hard, some soft. Another way I did it is I used the Gaussian Blur Filter to soften. But the problem with the Gaussian Blur Filter, which you do under Filter and Blur and then Gaussian Blur, which is the only filter we'll consistently use because we can control it, is that it will evenly soften everything. So I only did that to this kind of subset of cloud, right? And in that, I feel I can like safely erase away more from if there's any kind of hard edges. You can also use a selection tool and then select and mask and feather to soften. So there's lots of ways to kind of bite away at something. But what I didn't want to lose was all the edges inside the cloud, all this interior stuff. Photoshop's acting a little slow on me concerns me, but. So looking at my overall shape now, and I have a little miniature version of my creature so I can see what I can get away with. Instead of just continuing to smudge it, what I can do now is decide where can I really change this cloud? Like, where can I actually cut it up before I start bringing in new reference, right? Like, so what isn't working? And this little tail doesn't really work. I don't see any clouds like that. So I'm going to just go ahead with my soft eraser and kind of cut that off. <clears throat> and this little horn, that doesn't quite make sense. So I might use my tablet, use my 100% soft eraser. Maybe make it even a little bit bigger because it's pressure sensitive for size and like cut through this a little bit. And then maybe these columns, especially this back leg, right? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I might cut through that gently and cut through this. And I'm really kind of dismantling this cloud, right? Trying to figure out what's believable. And I still have this soft edged version, right? But now I'm going to take that soft edge version and I'm going to go to a lower opacity and I'm going to erase away from that a little bit as well in those same areas. But at the lower opacity, it's not going to get rid of it completely. It's going to leave this little kind of soft trail. So already, this is all just with the one cookie cutter cloud reference, right? I'm really cutting it up and creating my own shapes that I think are believable. So now it's time to bring in more reference. So I go to my folder, I go to where my cloud reference is, and there's a few things I can do. I can take some of these big references and I can bring them in. And mostly what I'll do is cut out clouds, stretch them, cut them out. and use them like cotton balls on top of my existing cloud, right? Just compositing. But with others, I can actually work with the background a little bit, right? So with this one, I'm gonna take its opacity way down and I'm just gonna use it to kind of break up the background a little bit. And I'm going to rasterize it so that I can soften it with Gaussian Blur. Because remember, we are creating our own sky as well. So we painted a gradation, but we can also add to it. So that's now a background I have as opposed to just this. 
and that will give a little bit more connection to these different clouds that are floating. I also have my original uh, kind of cloud background to build on top of. So I'm going to put that on top of the last background and I'm going to fade that out. And so all of those together give me a good context background for my cloud creature. All right. So now with the background, that gives me a little bit um, more understanding that clouds aren't just a flat shape in the sky, right? When it's just against a plain background, and you can do whatever background you want, but when it's just against a plain background, even if it's a gradation, we tend to think of it being one cloud. And to make my creature more believable, kind of cutting it up in these different ways, it's going to need to be clouds layered on top of each other. And so having a more layered background helps that make sense. All right, so let's bring in some new clouds. So let's see, I think, where do I need the most kind of puffiness on the shoulder there with the highlight? So I'm going to take my most, most puffy cloud, bring it in. And this is still compositing, but it's compositing as though we're uh, painting with our own textures. So you see that poof there? I want that up on top. So what do I need to do? I bring it in, it's plenty large. I move it on top of my different layers, and then I'm going to use my lasso and just rough cut it out. This is the part I want to use, but that's going to give me lots of hard edges, even if it's feathered at two pixels. And then I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate that, get rid of the smart layer. Then I'm going to use the magic wand with a tolerance of 32, click contiguous, try to select out, whoops, wrong layer. Try to select out all the blue, right? I don't want that blue. And then I might go to selected mask, so it's softer edged. Keep all of my last settings, which feather it 41 pixels. It's quite soft, because the last thing I cut out was a cloud. Say okay. I'll zoom in so you can see what that does. And then delete, delete. And you see how it really softens that edge. There's still a little bit there that I can work with, but really softens the edge. Now I need to erase with my soft edged 100% eraser the other hard edges that are there, right? So change this to 100%, keep it big and soft, and ghost away from the edges. Maybe even bigger so I can really, whoop, not that big really blend it in. Since about two versions ago, Photoshop's brushes jumped from 500 pixels to like 2000 pixels really, really quickly. So that's something you have to be a little aware of when you're picking your brush size. It's annoying because usually I want right between 500 and 1400. But the main thing you want to avoid, remember clouds are all about edges. The main thing you want to avoid are hard edges. And you also want to avoid just having this, the exact same kind of soft edge everywhere. You want a variety. And that's where bringing in these different clouds can really help. So now I have this cloud chunk, which I can, with my compositing skills, transform. I can warp as long as I keep the lighting in mind. right? I can bring that forward and backward. I can adjust its coloring. And as I pull it, it's going to soften in some regards. And that's OK. So now I might use the smudge tool. And I might push out some edges, some of these connections. Remember, this is like the, the wind pushing on the uh, on the cloud itself, pushing it back and forth. And I can also, of course, play with its adjustments. So I always recommend you play with levels, just with the midtone slider. Let's see, if anything, I think I want to darken the midtones a little bit. I can limit the highlights. I don't want it quite so bright, which maybe I'll do. 
I can play with the color balance. So this color balance looks pretty neutral and good. I could make it a little bluer in its midtones, right? A little pinker in its highlights. This is all stuff we have control of. A little greener in its shadows, and that actually helps. Command Z, you can see the difference that makes. It's subtle, but it is there. If I feel it's too sharp edged, I can use Gaussian Blur just a little bit to take some of the edge off. But I want it to look billowy, so maybe that much. And then I can ask myself, well, does that cloud help? Yeah. Am I losing anything from it? Well, I can use my eraser at a low opacity and start taking away from where I don't think it's needed as much, which is back here. So I'm going to go to a really low opacity, like 15%, and take away very slowly. Right. And now that those background spikes make a little bit more sense. That's kind of the wispiness left from this cloud. Okay, next for the head. Let's see. I think maybe a portion of this cloud. Well, let's see. Where's the shadow? There's a shadow underneath, like the helmet and stuff. So I'll go for this one. This has a strong under shadow, this part of the cloud. So I'm going to hit return to place it. And then I'm going to rough select out a section of cloud I think I can use more than I need. Right. Duplicate with Command-J, delete the smart object, immediately go to 100% opacity, soft eraser, and bite away at these edges. Strange that it's not going on the right layer. No, I'm using uh, at least five different clouds. So I'm bringing in new cloud reference. Now, because their clouds are such just a texture element, you could do a lot with internally compositing from the same one. But it's going to start to look like it doesn't have enough variation. right? So the main thing to look for is a, a variety of edge control, both internal to the cloud and on the outside. That everything's not the same in terms of sharpness, and not every, that not everything's the same in terms of hardness. Okay, so this is the new one I brought in. I want to erase away from it. It's important to do this at 100%, otherwise you leave like a little lingering ghost of a hard edge, which is hard to see on the computer screen, but you will see it. I'll move that up. You will see it when you print it. Right. And then I can transform this push it around, maybe even rotate it a little bit. I'll put it on top of everything. But now I need to make it match the other clouds. This is, again, just good compositing practice. The way I can make it match the other clouds is by playing with its levels and brighten its midtones a little bit. Maybe limit its highlights. And then playing with its color balance. Now this one in its shadows, it's a little too purple. I'm going to push it towards the green, towards the yellow just a little bit, and the mid-tones. The main reason I assign it as a cloud is so you're really working with um, variations on white. which really makes you pay attention to the subtleties of color balance. Now, how can I get it to suggest my creature? Well, I, I get this kind of helmet, right? And then I can warp it, a little bit more variety. And I can even use this little shadow of the cloud to suggest an eye. Again, we first want it to be a believable cloud, but we want it to be inspired by our creature. Now then, looking at the cloud behind, how can I kind of carry that shadow a little bit? Because I want them to feel like they're piled on top of each other. Well, I can use burn. So all these tools we've used before, 
I want to use burn with a 